Hey folks, Dayhugger from the Six here, and welcome to part two of my winter camping adventure in a made for summertime Safari Condo Alto teardrop camper. In last week's episode, we headed north to Algonquin Park, set up camp, prepped the trailer, and spent the night as temperatures dipped to minus 10 Celsius. Then we set out on a long, super icy day hike in the backcountry. Just before I got here, it's always that way too, just before you're going to take your break, I just slipped and fell on the ice on the trail. So I should have put my crampons back on once I hit the ice again, and I didn't. So I think I'm okay, I don't feel any, nothing really hurts, so. Uh, I had my pulls, so I think I caught a lot of the fall with the pulls, and really just kind of slid not gracefully down. <laughs> but we'll see, my hips, eh, maybe my hips a little sore, but... Ooh. Anyway, as uh, they told us in New Zealand on Tongarero, there's only one way you're getting out of here, and that is walking. This is my favorite campsite, I think. Very cool, right out on a point. It's basically got lake on two sides. All right, well, I got a lot of walking to do and I'm running out of daylight, so gotta start booking her. Still got a couple of kilometers to go. It's been a while since I've done a hike this long. The muscles are starting to cry out. And uh, I ran out of water. I do have a water filter with me and I filtered some from the lake. So if I'm desperate, I guess I'll drink that. I don't know, you know what, filtering it out of a glacier stream in the mountains seems okay, but just around here there's so much, you know, dead leaves and vegetation and there's a lot of beavers and all kinds of critters. So, you wonder if a simple Solomon filter is enough to really make the water safe. I'm not sure. I think I might stop by the camp store and talk to them about that. Like the outfitter store. Because they would be the experts in that. Ooh. Okay. So this is what I'm up against now. I'm going to put the camera away for this. <laughs> I decided to come to the Starling Lake lookout to figure I have enough time so I don't have to worry about being out here in the dark. And I couldn't resist because it is an amazing spot. So the trailer is parked just straight that way, probably over one more of those rises. Just right there. So I'm going to walk to the end of the lake and then it's just a little bit farther over the river a couple of times and then over the big waterfall river then just a quick walk to the campground. And we're back to the ice. And we are back to the fork. So, almost there. I wonder how sketchy these icy hills are going to be though, after a day of melting. Well, we're about to find out. All right, we're back to the rail trail. Almost there, just a very short distance down to that beautiful waterfall and then a few, maybe 500 meters or so to get to the campground from there. I'm getting a little tired, so I'm kind of looking forward to it. And we're back. I don't know, I, with all the melting, I feel like there's a lot more water coming through here now than there was when I came over it the first time, which makes sense. We're almost there. Maybe another quarter of a mile, half a mile, something like that. All right, I'm back to the campground. 
I ended up drinking some of the water that I filtered, so we'll see if I get beaver fever or not. <laughs> and good news is the rig is where I left it, which is always a plus. And we're going to find out now if that squirrel figured out a way in. <laughs> oh man, that sun feels good. Wow. I definitely got a little dehydrated, so I've got some hydrolite. All right. So it's just a powder. And you add the water, and it's an electrolyte. Kind of fizzy. checking the all trails so that was 17.66 kilometers so that's about 11 miles I think and 808 meters of elevation gain that's a lot of elevation gain I think we did some in the Rockies that weren't that much elevation gain the thing here too is, is that it's up down up down up down so uh, the good thing is you don't have it all up at once and then all down at once like you do in the Rockies and it took me five hours and 47 minutes to do it really enjoyed the hike i mean it's got some beautiful campsites on the lake it's a backpacking trail actually and it's got that beautiful starling lake lookout some really all kinds of different forests that you're walking through uh it was definitely a little sketchy with the ice um almost in hindsight i'm thinking maybe it was a little crazy to even do it even with the crampons but anyways i i did it and i made it back all in one piece so that's good so I'm just going to relax, finish this hydrolyte, and then I'm going to uh, probably take a shower. And then I think that steak might have my name on it. So it's been a bit of a comedy of errors here. So number one, my boots are completely soaked. So I've got them in front of the, where the truma shoots out the hot air, but I don't think they're going to dry for a while. Probably not until tomorrow. So campfire is off because the mistake I made is that is literally the only pair of footwear, excuse me, that I brought with me. So no campfire tonight which is okay because I'm exhausted. And that brings me to my next thing, which is our camping style. So today is kind of a typical camping day for us. So typically we go out and we do something that takes the entire day and exhausts us. <laughs> and then when you get back to the trailer, um, you know, the beauty of the trailer is just being able to come inside, relax, you have your own space. Um, all four of us can fit back there on the big bed and we'll set up a TV right where that water bottle is and we'll watch a movie or whatever and that's usually the kind of thing that we want to do we just want to kind of relax so now not to say I mean I would say we do a campfire maybe half the time maybe a third of the time something like that but on a day where you've been hiking for eight hours or seven hours or whatever and you're exhausted sometimes you do just want to kind of relax in the trailer so I'm, I'm okay with the shoe situation because uh, I think that's what I wanted to do anyway, was just relax in the trailer a little bit. Now, in terms of the cold weather camping, there's one learning, one other learning, which is that the floor gets darn cold. Um, so what I've been doing is I've got yesterday's socks and I'm just keeping those underneath my feet as I walk around and everything. And that keeps them warm so I mean not ideal again if I'd brought my slides then um, I'd be wearing the slides in here and um, I can't believe because we even made a video about how awesome slides are especially the kinds that have holes in them so the water comes out when you're in the shower but 
so uh, I don't have anything to wear in the shower as well. So I'm, I'm probably just going to have to go barefoot. But uh, uh, so anyway, if if you're thinking about doing a solo trip like this, um, don't forget all your footwear. Bring at least one extra pair of outdoor shoes and then something to wear in the trailer. And uh, I don't know, we're going to have to think if, if this cold weather camping thing becomes a thing, maybe I'll put something down on the floor that will provide a little bit of warmth and insulation. So stay tuned for that. I'm not saying I'm going to do it, but I'm going to think about it. Anyway, today's dinner is a little bit better. I've got ribs. I, I made a big mess of ribs before I left. So the girls would have something easy when they get home from work and school. And I just baked or microwaved these potatoes. Um, but I'm really looking forward to this. So, um, yeah, it's probably going to be just kind of like eat and then maybe I'll see if they're, the Leafs are playing or watch a movie or something and then just hit the sack. All right, guys, so watched a little bit of TV and now I am just hitting the sack. Also had a little bit of cramping, so that was a longer hike than I've done in a long time. So I had to do a lot of massaging my legs, drink lots of water and everything. So hopefully I won't wake up in the middle of the night with a cramp because that would really stink. But uh, looking forward to another day. Trailer is a little cool. I do have the vent cracked just for humidity. I uh, haven't had any fogging in the windows at all. So hopefully that continues. But we'll see you in the morning. I was pretty exhausted from that hike, so I slept in until 11. I haven't done that in years, <laughs> but I feel really good now. As you can see, we had a little bit of condensation. It's a little bit more, but the, since the sun came out, it kind of uh, has been taken care of it. So I've got a little bit in this window as well. Um, it's already quite warm though. It did not get as cold last night as it did uh, the previous night. So it was very comfortable in the trailer, not cold at all. And uh, yeah, I had a great sleep. And uh, so now I'm going to go take a shower and then uh, we'll start the day. All right, well, I'm enjoying this lazy day and I went and took a shower, which wasn't much fun because I forgot my slides. And I'll leave a link in the description. If you don't have a pair of shower slides, uh, you got to get them. They're better than flip-flops because they actually let the water run out the bottom of the shoe. And uh, it just makes the showering so much easier. It's just so disgusting, you know, with your bare feet on the on the floors and the showers. And, and being winter, even though the weather is nice, there's a lot of mud and everything getting tracked in there. Just not a fun scenario. So check out that uh, if you want. And yeah, so I took the shower and... I chopped some kindling so I could have a fire tonight. And then I realized I hadn't eaten anything yet. So I'm having a little breakfast lunch here. Then I'm actually going to do a review of the RV Cup bike rack that came with our trailer. So I'm gonna start working on that. And uh, maybe, you know, depending on how much time I have, I might do some other videos along that line as well. I've got a whole list of things that uh, are in the hopper as it were. But today is just relaxing around the campsite. This afternoon was, as I said, just doing some work on the computer. I filmed an episode for the channel. Uh, the Arvika bike rack review. Got the fire going. And there it is right there. And now I'm just waiting for the barbecue to heat up. In terms of the cold weather camping part, it, it's been below zero the first two nights. The first night was really cold. Last night wasn't too bad. And tonight it's supposed to go again just around freezing. Um, trailer has been fine you can tell it's a not a four season trailer i mean it's a little drafty i guess but the truma combi has no problem that's our furnace has no problem keeping up so all in all i'd say this was pretty good i i 
close things up a little bit more in terms of the window and the roof vent last night. And so I did have a little bit of condensation. Although once the sun came up, the condensation kind of burned off. And I did crack the window a little bit too, so. But honestly, the condensation problem was not nearly as bad as I was thinking it was going to be. I think if it was colder, it probably would be a bigger issue. But uh, so far, so good. Well, I'm really looking forward to a nice steak. And uh, just relax for the rest of the evening. Dinner is done and I'm hungry so I'm looking forward to this. I feel like I might overcook the steak because it's a little bit thinner than what I usually get so I might have cooked it to the uh, times that I'm used to. Yes, it is overcooked. I'm sure it'll still be tasty. Bon appetit. So I ate dinner, watched a few episodes of uh, my favorite Netflix show and uh, now I'm gonna hit the sack. And it got a lot colder. Um, I think it might even be colder than the first night. I don't know. I wasn't expecting that, but boy, did it ever get cold. So I'm wearing an extra layer. It's kind of even a little cool in the trailer. I'm going to hit the sack, and we'll see you in the morning. Good morning. So it took a little while to get to sleep, but... Uh, I turned up the heat a little bit and, and then got to sleep no problem. All this was still pretty luxury camping compared to tenting, that's for sure. The double duty bag, it was pretty much full, so I sealed it. Um, but there wasn't enough of the gelling agent in there. So now I've got this <laughs> massive bag of, you know what, I'm not really sure what to do with it. I don't know if I want to just throw it into a garbage can, but I guess that's what I'm going to have to do. But anyway, other than that, it worked fine though. Um, if I were to do this again though, or if, and I probably will, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy the pail that's actually intended for that thing. And I'll just put it in the toilet bathroom here beside the toilet because it'll just be a better shape and, and just make things, how do I say, a little neater and tidier. So, uh, cause the toilet is so, the toilet bowl is so not deep. It's so small. Um, it, it made it a little bit challenging to get it in there and then not to get yourself dirty. And maybe I'm getting into too much detail, now. <laughs> but, uh, anyways, it, it worked. The other thing you can do, I, I saw at the store is that you can buy more of that gelling agent separately. So that would be another option. Um, cause I think the idea with these is that you kind of turn everything solid. So anyway, that's the update on the double duty bag. Uh, still, I was happy not to have to run to the outhouse every single time I had to go to the bathroom. So that was good. So I've pulled the curtain away from the window. So hopefully that'll evaporate. That's actually more than I had yet last night. So, but still, I would imagine if it was like 30 below or something, uh, it would be much worse. Got the coffee going here. Uh, as for the dishes situation, so I would just do it the way we always did it when we were tent camping, but uh, unfortunately, uh, the dish soap didn't make the trip. <laughs> we took it out, I guess, you know, so it wouldn't freeze. And, uh, didn't put it back in for this little unplanned jaunt. So I'm just going to stack these up in the uh, in the sink. And I did rinse a few things and there's water in this bowl and I'll dump that in one of the pit toilets. And then I'll wash them when I get home. Keeping breakfast simple. I'm just gonna eat this. Of course, you gotta have your coffee. And uh, then I'm gonna I have the campsite until two, so I'm gonna stick around. It's supposed to be another beautiful day. Yeah, just probably sit on my chair, look out over the lake and relax a little bit. 
and uh, I'll check out around 2, which is the checkout time, and head home. So what did we learn about the safari condo in cold weather? Well, basically I think it's just that it's a struggle between uh, condensation and moisture management versus staying warm. Because as soon as you start cracking windows and opening the vent, uh, it gets a lot colder in the trailer and the Truma furnace is just working overtime to try to keep things warm. If you close things up, it definitely was warmer in the trailer, but then you get a lot of condensation on the windows. So that's the battle. Another thing we learned is that, and this is not about our trailer in particular, but just winter camping in general. So the trailer is winterized, so none of the plumbing was in play. And that is really one of the big luxuries that an RV offers over a tent. Because basically it becomes a hard-sided tent when you don't have your toilet and your sink and all of that kind of stuff. So it was a pain having to go to the bathroom, going to the comfort station to wash my hands and all that kind of thing. So I definitely really missed having uh, those things uh, at my beck and call right at the campsite. Um, all in all though, it was a very fun experience and obviously the trailer was still more comfortable than a tent because it has a furnace and the beds are well off the ground and it's just much warmer and more comfortable. Um, still had a kitchen too that was functional and all that. If you've never done this before, especially in a winter like this where there's no salt and the roads aren't slippery at all, and uh, I would definitely recommend it. It was a, it was a nice trip. Fuel economy update, leaving New Lake Provincial Park. I'm at 17.5. I did do probably around 100 kilometers of non-towing driving, so I was around 19-ish when I got here. Uh, the tires aren't fully inflated to spec right now. It's pretty cool here right now, and I'm guessing it's probably going to be warmer in Toronto. So if I fully inflate them here, I'll probably end up being overinflated by the time uh, I get down to a higher air temperature. So it's been a wacky winter where you can go from minus 10 or minus 15 all the way up to plus 10 or plus 15. And so I'm sort of trying to play it in the middle right now. Yeah, but be interesting to see what that final fuel economy number is for the trip. Hey folks, it's the morning after the Algonquin trip. Final fuel economy number is 17.5 liters per 100 kilometers. Uh, that's 13.4 US MPG. We'll see if warmer weather and maybe having the tire pressures set properly will improve that. I'm kind of hoping in the summer I'll be getting more around 15 MPG, um, but we shall see. Thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.